way. Uh-huh. You have to sit down and, and welcome. My name is Obendako. Welcome, welcome. Today I want to talk with you about uh, African culture and African consciousness. They just struck me the other time that there's a big difference between the two. Growing up in Ghana, uh, we, I was born into a community. We grew up with a culture. We, we grew up you know, seeing how uh, children were named, children were trained, how you had to relate with your parents, how to, you, we had to relate with our grandparents, the big funeral, going to church, going to school, going to farm. You know, we grew up with that, so that was not a problem. But what I did not know was that there's another level. So we could see, we could see our chiefs, they will dress in kente with all those, you know, they will be there by, there will be gatherings. And so if you were born on the continent, you are aware of some level of culture. And uh, culture is, a, is, is an educational system for a group of people. It could be in a family, even you, you may have your own personal culture. It's good. The culture that we had in Ghana, uh, uh, um, you know, helped us from um, the, the colonizers destroying us. It kept us. And that's why you can see, if you go to any African country where the culture is very loud, at least there is some, that sense of pride of the people. They believe that they have something. But there is another level that the culture did not teach us, and that is the, the consciousness. And that one is a deliberate attempt to undo everything that every lie every institution every control that the people who came here uh, over the last 400 500 years try to do to the african person and the african image and the african dignity that one must be taught consciously constructively intentionally you know and so if you have not studied this subject as an african you could dress you could have african name you could be very proud you know some of them may not even like the woman i mean you could be very proud african but they, they would want to bleach or uh, some african men could be very proud but very, they're very you know happy to wear the suit and the tie and to speak the the british english <laughs> and so i think that the foundation of, of our education should not just be the culture but more importantly the consciousness the african consciousness because until we know the right history the consciousness is built out of our sense of the depth of the history of africa that we know that not the history that is taught by the, the europeans no but the history that is taught out of our heroism out of the people who fought even the history before our encounter with the Europeans and our encounter with the Arabs. All the things that we conquered, the people who stood and fought and protected us, the achievement, our scientific advancement, our technological advancement, the, the, our great business empires, our great empires, our great kingdoms, and, and our great uh, civilizations that were built thousands of years ago. Those things have been intentionally kept from majority of Africans. So Africans who are even very cultural may not necessarily have any idea of this. And I just say that without the consciousness, as the world has become, you know, growing up, you will hear a lot of things. And I mean, even if you watch TV, they raise everything that is not African as the standard. And anything that is the African is the stop standard. And so the diasporas, the Africans who were taken out of here to America, to, to Jamaica, to all those, anything that they could see about Africa, if they just watch the TV, if they just read the newspaper, it will never be, be anything good. And that's why most of them would not want to have anything to do with Africa, you know, until they start to have the consciousness, which is built out of deliberate education, you know, from the history that, uh, not, is, that is not taught by the Europeans, but us, our great teachers, our great uh, preachers, our great authors, you know. So until you have had contact with a conscious African material is so likely that you as an African you are not even conscious and consciousness is being is being you no know, you're no more asleep you're now proud of your heritage if you have wealth you give it to your people if you're looking for courage and and capacity you will not say that everybody else has it but your people if you see any African who is trying to attribute wisdom and knowledge and advancements advancement to Europeans but when it comes to the African, in the same vein, he puts the Africans down. That is an African who could be cultured.
but who is zero in terms of the consciousness you know so there is not been any material that is study. so I, I have friends who are doctors who are engineers who are bankers who will put materials africans who will put materials that obviously put their own people down or they read a test and they will agree with it and sometimes on our whatsapp platforms you see some of these things i say that this one was written by somebody who was born on the continent because i can guarantee you majority of us who were born on the continent have no awareness of the consciousness that is required for us to be a people who, who are proud of our heritage and i'm not talking about the independence day celebrating <laughs> you know you're celebrating independence day and wearing your genti i said i'm a proud Ghanaian. you know i'm talking of the one who is using wealth business technology policies to upgrade his people to build the wealth you're not the one trying to look at uh, this is the contract let's give it to the chinese <laughs> And the Chinese companies are far advanced. Let's give it to them. Like, you know, let's give this business to the foreigners. And when it comes to your people, you say that we can't trust them. We, they, 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 they are not trustworthy. They are not capable. They are poor. If you are like that, you have no idea of the African consciousness. It's and it's because you have not encountered any material. You have not read any good material on Africa. And I dare say that majority of Africans are in this category. There are those who have no sense of culture at all. They just would wear anything because they were born into it. And there are those who, who are conscious, um, who are aware of the culture, but they have not upgraded to the next levels. Now, that's why you can see a lot of our chiefs have culture, but they don't have the consciousness. So that's why they are waiting for some young European to come and help them to dig a pit as toilet, you know. Because there's no consciousness once you see the conscious african you see a proud courageous productive defendable african and you'll never see a great african leader who does not have the consciousness that i'm talking of and so if you have any african leader who has no consciousness you will see it corruption will be very high you will not trust his people you give all the opportunities to foreigners you give power to foreigners you give wealth to poor foreigners you will not be able to stand up against the colonizers and what they continue to do to destroy the continent and they will not even put right materials in, in educating the next generation because they are not aware they are asleep and there are many africans that are in that category and if anybody wants to destroy you they will change that history and a lot of africans i i i went to school in ghana and the first degree I had, not, I had not read any good material on the history of Africa apart from the one the few that you know the scattered words that they taught us in, 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 in I think in Genesis but that was not something that I could be proud of the moment I got hold of that material living somewhere I never I never had problem moving to Ghana to live and to build my life because then I saw myself differently until the mind of the african is decolonized until the mind of the african is repaired the african cannot be conscious and it really is not in in any best universities anyway so it really does not matter which kind of so-called best universities that an african go an african goes to it could be any top university yeah harvard oxford it doesn't matter or even lego or coming from if that person has not been taught consciously that african cannot be trusted and cannot be dependent on and we have a lot of them and so when they come into contact with a big contract, they think of themselves first. The unconscious African is selfish and corrupt and will take for all himself. He will never think of his people because he does not even see the pain of his people. The African who will see the pain of his people is African who is <laughs> awake. <laughs> or somebody will say, I woke. You're right. So that is what we need to restore. And so sometimes when you engage in debate, when you engage in discussions, you have to really know where this African stands, whether it's conscious or it's just a cultured African who's not conscious. And a lot of us are not in that category yet. Because that kind of information that will lift the African, a lot of things have been done to keep that kind of information from the African. A lot of it. How many times do you see the books of Dr. Kwame Nkrumah? Or you see the book of Chancellor William? But you see every book of Shakespeare and all those guys. And their books are not meant for us. Their books were written for their people. I mean, even if they are lying. It really does not matter who is lying. What matters is, do you have the truth? Because it does not matter the, the quantum of the lies that they have. If you have a little of the truth, then you'll be okay. 
Okay, so the moment you see yourself as an African who is very frustrated because you see a lot of Africans who really want to see Africa develop, but they get frustrated because they see the, the challenge as very enormous. The problem that we have is the consciousness and it's based on the materials that we've been fed with. And all those materials were designed to put us to sleep and to disable our ability to think for ourselves. Never forget that, our ability to think for ourselves. So every day we go to church, the information that they are giving to us, much of those information we cannot use for anything. And yet we are being judged by what we are not doing as a people in our community, in our country, in our continent. If you go to a place all your time and all that information they're giving you, a lot of the, the teachers, whether in our universities, whether in our schools, or whether in our religious settings, our churches and mosques, a lot of our teachers have no African consciousness. And therefore they cannot wake the people up. They can't. And that's why you, can, you have been listening to them for 30 years. Look at the results. Are you happy with the results? If you're happy with the results, no problem. If the wealth and the power is with the Africans, then they're perfect. A lot, of our a lot of our teachers themselves are asking a lot of questions because the material they themselves were giving, they were not giving the truth. They were giving the things that will make them proud and fight. And so I'm saying that a lot of things that have pushed data, information, knowledge on us. If you see any knowledge that is so much available to the African, that knowledge will never save the African. That knowledge will never free the African. The knowledge that will free the African is not available on the street. It's been kept from them. Never forget that. Any knowledge that is available every day that we hear, every Sunday, every Wednesday, that we hear, in the news you see the way we promote the sports and the entertainment the politics that we do on our radio every day those kind of things will never build the country that which will build the country is that which will repair in the self-doubt that the africans have of themselves because that's where it starts the foundation of education is the consciousness is the history that they have about themselves as a great people the moment a people can see themselves as great as powerful as able they will not wait for anybody to come and help them. From there, you can then give them all the other kind of information. Then you can teach them business. You can teach them governance. You can teach them finance. You can teach them marriage. But until they have good sense of themselves, then all the other things that you continue to teach them, they are useless because they will not be able to do anything with them because they don't believe that they have the capacity. You know, so my name is Obey Dago. I'm talking about. There are two kinds of Africans. There is the conscious African and there is the cultured one. There, there, there is somebody who says, I'm culture. You know, so yeah, this Saturday I will go for funeral of my grandmother. You know, you see a lot of them wearing in the, with all the umbrella and, you know, the, all the music and the dance. They are good. But the same people will then go and look for visa and travel to America. And if you ask them about Ghana, they will say, Ghana, there is no hope here. Talk to any young man. He will dress all the Kotoko JC and go and shout in the sports stadium. And then the next day he's looking for visa to travel to England because he believes that there's no opportunity here. The problem is that the young man is not conscious. He's aware of his culture to a certain limit. He may even be proud of it, but he's, he's not conscious. He doesn't believe that he has what it takes. He's not even aware of the wealth that he has. You know, so he's ready to work for, pay, for, for little money for a Chinese guy who is doing Kalamse in his own land. The gold belongs to him, but he's able to go and work for 20 cities a day because he's been put to sleep and a lot of Africans have been put to sleep. So the people that you can depend on, the Africans that you can depend on. So a lot of the times we hear of uh, the problem of Africa is African leadership. No, no, no. It's the, it's the process that is producing that leadership. It's not so much the leader. Because the leader is going to do what he's made of, what he knows, the content that he has. So if the leader is not conscious of who he is as an African and all the complexities and the systems that have been put in place to stop him and his people from progressing, that leader will go there and nothing will change because then he will not be able to build a counteractive system that is, that is helping his people to become prosperous. Never underestimate our contact with the Europeans and the damage that those Europeans have done to the African being and the African personality and a lot of the materials that have come out of that have been very much destructive to the Africans with everything that they are teaching almost everything that they are teaching in their institutions and their schools they never bring the best out of the Africans because they raised everybody else and put the other and put the African down you know and I'm saying that any institutions that they led they established they led and left and the Africans are continuing. The systems in place are designed to put the Africans to sleep. So they could be cultural. 
it could be you know and even there are a lot of africans who are now no they have no sense of culture at all let alone consciousness <laughs> they will bleach they will, they will do all kind of things and they have no regard for their people they have no pride in their people we even change their name and they are more allegiant to their religion than to their continent and that they, they turn around to excuse their own people for not developing and they will side with anybody who who insult their people their leadership their elders the who talk against them and tell you that there's no opportunity here they are incapable they are not trustworthy these people it can it does not even matter whether they are leaders or they are business people they have money it really does not matter there are a lot of Africans who have critical leadership in African countries who have no consciousness at all. They may have money, but they have no consciousness at all. And you can see it because they can't see the pain of their people. They can't relate with it because they are asleep. They are asleep. And so once you see pride, you see African dignity, you see strength, you see character, you see courage, you see an African who is conscious. You can also see the culture and still see shallowness. But we are looking at those who are strong. You can produce strong Africans who are not conscious. And so that is the first step of education. So if you're looking at educating your children, then look for that. If, you, if you, they are not conscious Africans, and I'm saying that that is constructively done, that is an education that has to be intentionally done, where you're teaching them about their history beyond slavery and colonization. And even, even during that period, the things that their ancestors stood and fought. When you hear somebody say that they sold their people, you have no idea how many Africans fought, killed, prevented the Europeans from taking over Africa. You have no idea. The fact that we are still alive, me, you know, that means that our people fought back. So when you hear any African, we sold our people, our people are, you know, bad, we are this, that is an African who has no consciousness at all. He has no data, no information, and he doesn't even think that is needed, it's important. And he continues to blame himself and blame his own people forever until he wakes up. And nothing will wake him up than the knowledge of self, the knowledge of self, the knowledge, the right history that is beyond the lies that the Europeans have taught us through their religion and through the schools that they left and even through their movies and through their media the government structures and how the world runs you know so we have a tough time and sometimes you have to look at it for the next 100 200 years what we're doing where we will raise a people who will be so much proud and not doubt themselves and believe in themselves and respect themselves the europeans also need this because they have also been lied to They've been lied to, a lot of people have been lied to, and Europeans are included, largely. Most of their top corporate executives have been lied to. They think that they are the best of the humans, and they deserve everything, and have, nobody else deserves anything, and that they are the richest. A lot, of Euro a lot of people who live in the West don't know that the life that they live is bondage. They have no idea. They have no clue, because they've been lied to. They've been conditioned. They've been brainwashed, just as the Africans have been brainwashed to believe that they have nothing. And so even if they have gold, they still don't see that. <laughs> so I want to say thank you very much for watching the African, who is, uh, the African culture and the African consciousness. You will never wake up and see your heritage and your greatness and be happy and fulfilled and purposeful and be selfless and, and be driven by character and courage until you are a cultured African and you are conscious African, you need it too. So I want to say thank you very much for watching.